embrace kadela kata embrace kadila shabakata prende gedia shadi gedes kadeba mantebra kepro shabikatos kadila kata medebaratusia the opening of the eyes jinas kabadi kataliata grantes kadeba dida kata it says in colossians 3 22 to 24 can we celebrate god for what he has done and I believe for anyone who is having any issues with your housing, let this testimony be an advert of what God is about to do in your life. Can you shout a big Amen? Hallelujah. So let's pay attention to those that will be sharing with us physically and we will rejoice with those who rejoice. Hallelujah. You welcome your name and what the Lord has done. Just straight to the point. Hi everyone. Happy, happy new day. This is a new day in the USA. My name is uh, Lady Abina, and uh, I am serving in the PR department, and I'm one of the people collating the testimonies. Um, 2003, I've been in the United States, and uh, in 2005, I filed a petition to adjust my status, and there was a technical error. And because of that, the U.S. government, for the last 21 years, granted me everything except my citizenship, and my ability to travel abroad. I have two businesses, two companies. I hire people, I'm an employer. And so when uh, I started following Apostle, February 2020, I went through a few things and there was one time Apostle was ministering the power to get wealth. I was on travel in New Orleans working in business and I emptied my bank account. I said, God, I want to believe what your servant said. And a year later, and another year later, well, let's leave it at that. Hallelujah. Why I'm here is because something happened a few hours before I got here this morning. I um, signed my name to volunteer in the PR department. And uh, there were so many people, so I said, you know, they're probably not even going to reach out to me, but someone did. And I'm part of the peer. Minister Lacombe put me in the testimonies unit, and I'm like, is this a punishment? Am I going to sit here and read people's testimonies? So on our last peer, um, sorry, workers call, apostle ministered, and as he was ministering, he was calling all kinds of cases. And I said, dear Jesus, Apostle doesn't like to mention immigration settlement. Could you just let him say something? So in 20 seconds, he said that you have a court case. And it has something to do with your stay in America. You are a worker and the Lord is saying that before the conference. And I saw Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, 21 years. I am very vulnerable to the U.S. government. They would not give me what I deserve. I came to possess my possession. Oh, you gotta wait for the best part, honey. Jesus Christ. So, just in March, my father has passed away and my family out of faith said we will not bury your father until you come i said the u.s government says i can't travel i've turned down global opportunities my god and then uh, they picked the dates now the date that they picked for my father's burial is my 21st anniversary in the united states they did not even know so i've been quiet about this whole thing and then my lawyer filed a petition with the death certificate everything the U.S. CIS says no. They denied the petition. I said, the lawyer, let's give up. She said, Abina, I believe in you and I believe in this case. Let's sue the United States government. I said, what? So, she said, we need to lawyer up. When a lawyer tells you we need to lawyer up, this is, a big, this is above her pay grade. And she went through the pain. This is my destiny help. I just cost a lot of thousands of money, but she was a helper. She reached out to all the big kahunas, you know. And then we found one and he said, I'm about to sue the government. Are you ready? I said, I'm not. He summoned, when he sent me the summons, he decided to summon the, the, the Attorney General of the United States. I said, Jesus. 
Key Simon, the Secretary of the Homeland Security, I fell down. Four people have said, this man wants to end my life in America. Now, he filed the case. He said, we're going to go back and forth for the next six months. So yesterday, when I took my computer, we started collating the testimonies. Edika's testimony was the first I pulled. And I read it, I said, Jesus, why is he writing my testimony? I told you I want to be the first to testify before I compile anybody's testimony. So I went back to my hotel room. My friends are here. I invited a lot of professionals, doctors, and other things. They are here. And my roommate is my best friend who is a doctor. So this morning as I was ironing, I was praying in the spirit. I said, God... The conference is today. You told the apostle to tell me. Ha! Ha! Ah, Jesus! 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 Ay, 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 ay. As soon as I get out of the show, I see a missed call from my attorney. I said, ha, 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 I called the attorney back. She said, I'm being out. She said, we are not going to court. The U.S. government has approved your petition. to bury my father and I'm going to take on the world I am ready this is over apostle I invited people here and I told them God would not shame them and as I was sitting there compiling the testimonies I told everyone that came because of me I said you've got to believe in this God I, I, I want to share something I said I didn't make you spend your money to come here in vain there is something I've seen in this ministry. And even if it cost me my last dime, I've given up my staff. My people have said, I'm not working for a whole week. I'm here to serve and I'm going to be here till Sunday. They kept changing the dates. I said, I don't care. I don't report to anybody. I'll be here and I'll serve to the end. If Apostle says we're staying for another two weeks, I'm here. And I am the first testifier. Just as you said, I am. Hallelujah! Let me tell you how we do it back in Nigeria. Jesus, yeah! Hallelujah! <laughs> We're going to sing the song. Blessed be the Lord. That's just one. Please sit down and let's listen. Your name and what the Lord has done. Straight to the point. Very well. My name is Catherine Bogwa. I thank the Lord. Praise God. I want to restrict myself just to what God did during the meeting, the first meeting of the volunteers. Uh, before that, I had a problem with my last, uh, my left breast. I, it sounded like a heavy weight, just like after lactating and immediately stopping. And that uh, affected my psychology. I was trying to find a lamp or anything. There was nothing. But then I told my husband, and we, 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 we are not long here in America, so it was troublesome. But in the day of the meeting, I never thought about a miracle. I was only attending a meeting on Zoom, thinking that on the other side I'll find like uh, people sitting on administrative seats. But joining on the, on the Zoom, the worship team was doing uh, worship. And I started feeling like beneath my feet was some, some sensation that was coming up to my, my knees. Oh, it was really like something I didn't expect. And then after that, when Apostle stood, uh, he came to give a word. 
And then the sensation get in, got intense and went up, up to my chest. At that time, I felt like even if I closed my eyes, I would tell where the bone is and where the flesh is. I would feel like within my stomach, like, uh, I don't know what to say, but like a balloon which had water. If you closed your eyes and let the water out, you would just feel how it is like deflating with water. And uh, I didn't know. I was like, God, what, what, what is this? And days after, I didn't know how it happened, when it happened. The left side that I could not even sleep with, I, I was like, oh, I don't even remember again. I, I don't even remember how it happened. I praise God, I thank God, for he has demonstrated the power of the resurrection of Christ and has healed me. Praise God. Hallelujah. Is someone celebrating Jesus? You may be seated here or following online and right now you're in pain or there's sickness in your body. In a very short while, you will not even remember. You will not even remember how it felt. Hallelujah. Go ahead and your name and what the Lord is doing. My name is Shani Nicole Johnson and in February the 6th of 2024, I went in for a breast reduction and came off the table with necrosis, which is gangrene. It was eating my left breast from the inside out. And I'm here to say they said that I would not live if I didn't get to the doctor. And when I got to the doctor, they had to cut it out and left a hole in my chest, which was in my breast, 10 centimeters in de depth. And I'm here to say March the 1st of 2024, they put me on a wound vac. And within three weeks, my breast tissue has started growing back. And, I, and the necrosis is gone. They said that the necrosis is incurable. And after looking at days, looking at Apostle Joshua Selma, he was calling out uh, different women that had breast cancer and different things that were going on with their breasts. And I was believing God for my, my healing and my deliverance. And I'm here to say that I have fresh tissue and I'm believing God today for my skin going back on my left breast. So I thank God, I thank Canonia, I thank Apostle Joshua Selman just for being the man of God he is because he is truly working in signs, miracles, and wonders. I am a miracle because I am standing here today fully healed from necrosis, from gangrene, and I thank God for it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Can we join her and celebrate God? Lost tissues returned. Cancer defeated. Cancer is no match for the power of God. Hallelujah. Let's listen. Your name and what the Lord has done. My name is Lillian. You've read my testimony and you called me in. Would you like me to say it again? No, 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 it's right. We, <laughs> I, I, I apologize. It most likely was a mistake. Okay, very brief. Let me give the testimony of the car. One afternoon, I was going to Walmart. When I entered Walmart, I wanted to pay for my for my phone and I did not know where to pay from. I asked that lady, do you know where I can be able to pay for this, for the, the, the phone? And then she told me, you don't pay it from here. But are you new in America? I said, yes, I'm new in America. Do you have a driving license? I said, I don't have a driving license. Get a driving license and call me. I have an extra car. I called. I went for the driving, driving school and I got the driving license and I called her. Twice we were supposed to meet and we were not able to meet. The third time she didn't pick my call. I told, I called, I told God, the God of Apostle Joshua Selman, who caused me to come here, do you give and take away? Said no. After a few weeks, I attended a meeting of community, the community that we, we, we are together. I met somebody. We exchanged pleasantries and he told me, I have two cars. Can I give you another one? 
I'm like, yes. And then I delayed for a month. The next time I call, the person tells me, my cousin came and requested for the car. And since you hadn't come, I gave out. I went back again. I said, oh God, the God of Apostle Joseph Selma, do you give and take? God said, no. The third time a lady we met, she told me, I have an extra car. This time I was very quick. I ran for the car. And I, I got the car. I, I used it for two months. She calls me and tells me, my husband has got a visa and I need the car back. I went back to the same source. Oh God, do you give and take? The fourth time, I, went, I met this lady now. She told me, I bought a new car and I have an extra car. How much would you like to give for this car? It was me to choose. I, I gave a very small amount of money for that car. And you know the kind of car it was? It's a Dodge, a Durango, can carry seven people. I, I paid for that car. When I went to DMV, they told me, can they give the reason why the car has been undervalued? They, they, my, the, the person who sold me could not even explain. So I got a car at that throwaway price because, no, would I get throwaway price or God prepared it for me? So that was the miracle. How I got to know Joshua, uh, Apostle Joshua Selman is through Facebook. The, the message came to my Facebook page. I followed and God it began to change in my life, it began to work in my life. I trusted God to go to a Bible college. God brought the Bible college to my, to just where the land, my, our land is here. And the apostle brought the Bible college here under Andrew Womack. I did the Bible college. They paid my fees. He paid half of my fees. I paid half. And I was able to graduate with a Bible, a Bible college. How I came to America, I went to the embassy when I was listening to the message. This grace called favor on the bus. I was on the bus listening to this grace called favor. When I entered the American embassy gate, the, the soldier at the gate looked at me and told me, people like you are the ones who are given visas. I said, what do you mean? He told me, what is your time? You're supposed to be here at nine, but you have come at seven, go in. When I entered the American embassy, the Kenyan American embassy, I come from Kenya. Any Kenyans in the house? So when I entered the embassy inside, there is a place where you normally wait. The Askari, the soldier, the soldier at the gate told me, preacher, you are going to get a visa. I told her, how do you know I'm a preacher? She said, you look, the preachers look like you. Come and sit here. So I entered the American embassy. I was, I, the favor of God was all over me. The consular looked at me. He did not even ask you for the bank statement. He did not even ask you for the invite letter. He looked at me and told me, sister, when, uh, when do you want to go? And how long do you want to be in America? And I was given a visa free. When I came to America, the person who received me at the airport, we were in a meeting one time, a meeting like this, and I was sitting at the edge of the, of the seat. A lady came walking and she could not find a seat. I told the lady, come and sit with me. We sat for the whole day in that meeting. And that is the person who came and received me at the airport and connected me to come to America and has, been, has assisted me. I have so much to say. Thank you. Can we join our sister and celebrate Jesus? Hallelujah. You will be the next to testify in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can we have our first testifier? Your name and what the Lord has done for you. Praise God. My name is Jessica Mabula. My testimony date is still 2021 when I had come to the U.S. to write my medical board exam from Jamaica. At the time I came to write the exam, um, I knew I was just meant to write the exam and go back. But I got messages from well wishers on how I should apply for a job in the U.S. And I was like, no, God said not yet. I need to go back. And each time I dream, I would see myself seeing patients in Jamaica. But I began to give it a thought. And eventually, I never got an offer. And God said, book your tickets and leave. And so when I went to Jamaica, within the time I was in the U.S., I had gotten a job offer here in Jamaica. But I could not go back because I had to write my exam. And when I went back, they were like, there's nothing we can do. We had to give your position up. And so I followed up with the ministry. And they said, nothing happened to your job. Your job was waiting for you. And so I applied. And then I came back. I had sessions after seeing people and 
doing the evangelism in Koinonia, back in Jamaica, I decided to apply for my master's program in Johns Hopkins University. And when I applied, I did not have any money, but I saved what I had as a physician. And when I did that, I told God I wasn't going to go to school with a loan. But I had a faith mismatch with my reality, so I applied for a loan. On the first day of my school, I got a letter that said, congratulations, prior. But then they said, we can't give you the loan again. And so I knew this testimony was going to be different. It wouldn't be God parting. It would be me walking in the miracle. So I didn't have the money, but semester after semester, miracle service after miracle service, hallelujah challenge after hallelujah challenge, tears after tears, prayers after prayers, God paid my tuition fee. Over 150,000 US dollars. He went, and here I stand like the disciples. When I sent you without a pause, did you lack nothing? And here I stand to say I lacked nothing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Someone's debt is being paid off in the name of Jesus. Your name and what the Lord has done for you. My name is Ozioma Ozioko. Praise the Lord. So first of all, I want to greatly appreciate God for transforming my life through our father, Apostle Joshua Selman. It has been a privilege to encounter his teachings through my elder brother, and God has greatly transformed me just by meeting him. Praise God. Then secondly, just yesterday, my husband has suffered from arthritis for six years. So from time to time, his left or right shoulder will become so swollen and so painful, he cannot raise his arm. His knees will become swollen. He can barely work. His feet will just swell up. We have seen several doctors without permanent help. It will just help a little bit and then it will come back. But just last night, after Apostle prayed and ministered to the sick, my husband is back home in Nigeria, so I called him. It was 3 a.m. in Nigeria. I called him. I said, Daddy, check yourself. God has healed you through his son, Apostle Selman. So he stood up and checked himself and said, I can feel no pain. My feet is all right. I am healed. I have come to return all the glory to God. Then, lastly, I'm a PhD student here in the U.S., and last semester has been... I don't know, it was very, very overwhelming for me because I was completing my master's program remotely back home and then as well doing my PhD research here, working as a teaching assistant and I took two courses. I was overwhelmed for the most part. But then midway through the semester, I went to God in prayer. I said, God, these two courses I am taking, if I'm able to earn A grades in the two of them, I will testify in Koinonia. Then shortly afterwards, there was an announcement in my school, in my university, for a scholarship that was awarded to one engineering student in the United States every two years. One person every two years. I said, God, I know I'm qualified to apply, but my chances of getting it was extremely slim. I said, God, if you give me this scholarship, I will stand the at Koinonia and I will testify. People of God, not only did I get the two A grades, I was honored with this scholarship. And I have come to return all glory to God, the lifter of men. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everyone believing God for a scholarship is your turn to testify in the name of Jesus. Your name and what the Lord has done for you. Praise the Lord. I'm just here to support her. She's a bit shaky. Roy for short. Um, uh, I was here, I'm here to testify for my knee. Um, I have been having knee problems since around April, and they had actually given me a knee brace that I said I would need to be wearing. Um, and yesterday, Apostle mentioned um, the people um, who had knee problems that, that in Jesus' name, that they would be healed. And then he said to check yourself. And usually when I push this knee up like this, there's a pop in my knee that I feel. And I did this multiple times and there was no pop at all. So, praise the Lord. Can we celebrate her? 
Hallelujah. What a mighty God that we serve. Your name. My name is Lucy. I am here to testify about the goodness of God. God blessed me with one son and one son only. And about a year ago, he was given a very serious diagnosis of cancer. The doctor said that he had less than a year to live. When I listened to the word of Apostle and he said, it is written. When the doctor said that he has less than a year to live, I said, it is written that he will live to testify and glorify about the goodness of God. My son endured 52 weeks of chemotherapy. And while Apostle would pray and he would say, shout Jesus at the top of your voice. I would look at him and say, baby, you, you have just come from chemo. But with everything that you have, you have to serve Jesus because he is the only one that can save you now. Fast forward, it's been two years. He is alive. But above everything, above everything, I say, God, you have to change and you have to work on your people. My whole community was changed. The doctor that said that he had less than a year to live, he would walk into the room and he would pray with us. When the apostle would say, you have dominion, the message that he preached that said, let them have dominion. I realized I have dominion over chemotherapy. I would walk in there and speak to that chemotherapy. Ooh, and I would tell it, you are going to hear and you are going to obey the word of the Lord. You cannot have my son. You will not have my son. You cannot have my son. He is a child of the most high God. A child of the most high God. My message is so timely and here is why. On Monday, I got here to Dallas on Tuesday. On Monday, I was in Houston at the MD Anderson Cancer Center. He had his follow-up appointment. I have the report that says that he is cancer-free! Cancer-free! share my testimony. I have so many reasons why I share my testimony, but I want to tell you three. I made a promise to my God that when you heal my son, how will people know that you are good? How will people know? I told my God, when you heal my son, I will stand in front of the congregation and I will tell people, you are Jehovah Rapha. And second of all, I told my God that people must be changed because of what you have done. But above everything, I am here to give somebody hope that has been told it is not possible. What was impossible? He made possible! He made possible! He made possible! He made possible! Praise the Lord! Thank you! Praise the Lord! What a marvelous God! Are we celebrating God? Let's begin to appreciate Him. Let's begin to bless His name. Oh, what a miraculous God that we serve. Oh, Makasha Taba Baba. Yes, yes. Jesus. Can we receive those that are sharing with us tonight? Let's encourage them as they come to share with us. Hallelujah. So, straight to the point, let's save time. We have a number of people. So, your name and what the Lord has done now. Great. My name is Maria Orozco, and I have two quick testimonies, one from last night. Um, my left leg had very sharp pain at times, just randomly for the past week. And, um, and I don't know when it happened during the service yesterday, but at the end, I was checking. I almost sprained my leg trying to check to see if it would hurt. And it's, it's fine. There's nothing. I've tried, and Jesus healed me. Um, and the other testimony... Come on, can we celebrate Jesus? <laughs> Hallelujah. And the other testimony um, is from um, 
May and July of this year, I was in $34,000 in debt. And um, it, I'd just gotten into a bad space financially. And it was just a huge mountain. I had plans for my life and it just felt like a huge, awful mountain. And every time Apostle would say, you get out of debt and I, hallelujah challenge, I danced, I decreed, I declare. And the Lord gave me a strategy. I don't recommend it for everyone, but for me, he gave me a very specific strategy. I implemented it and I feel like 10,000 pounds have been lifted off my life and I can move on with life again. So thank you, Apostle. Thank you, Pastor Nathaniel and all glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. He moves mountains. Hallelujah. We have to save time. Right to the point, your name and what the Lord has done. Praise the Lord. My name is Grace Moiswa. I'm 28 years old. And just quick backstory. I was born and my mom had a very traumatic delivery. So that when I was born, there was an injury to my shoulder. So as a child, I wore a cast. And what that meant was the bone in my right arm did not grow normally like the bone in my left arm. So my arms were unequal. And I was also born with a blood disorder. Last year, February, Hallelujah Challenge, Pastor um, Apostle Selman came and he was ministering healing. I was in my room in Houston, Texas, and he started listing off all these diseases. When he mentioned blood disorders are being healed, I raised my hand in my room and I believed. And the Holy Spirit told me, look at your arm. And I said, look at my arm. And I looked at my arm, and my arms were equal. This is what you call a creative miracle. Hallelujah. And I am a scientist, and when there's a lot of knowledge, there's a lack of faith. So that miracle made me believe that God heals. And what is medically impossible for God is not impossible. Praise the Lord. Can we celebrate Jesus for her life? I like that this report is coming from someone in the medical field. God can do the impossible. Hallelujah. Go ahead, your name and what the Lord has done. Hello, my name is Christian Malota. I'm coming from Michigan, but originally I'm a Malawian. So my testimony goes like this. Uh, I applied for American visa five times and they denied me. And by that time, I did not know Apostle Joshua Selman. I did not know Koinonia. And I gave up. I told God, if this is not your way for me to go to America, I accept it. Then in 2021, I came across uh, the teaching of Apostle Joshua. And it was titled, The, Queen, um, the Grace Court Favor. Or the Book of Esther. I mean, it was the Book of Esther. Before I listened to the Grace Court Favor. And then when I listened to that teaching, it got my attention and I started uh, listening to more of his teaching. And then uh, last year in May, it was a miracle service and Apostle said, I am seeing someone, you were denied visa five times. But this sixth time, you will be granted visa. And I did not know what that, that, that I did not know that that was testimony would come to pass because I had given it up. And then the school that I applied to in 2019, that is like four or some five years ago. They reached out to me and they told me, your place is still available and we have a scholarship for you. And when I went to the embassy, I was expecting to be asked so many questions. But to my surprise, because I was only praying for favor upon my life, when I went to the embassy, the only question, or, or I can say the only statement that the consular said was, so you are going to school? And I said, yes. And then she said, your visa is granted. Just like that. 
celebrate Jesus. And then when I came here, I was still listening to Apostle Joshua's uh, messages. And I like to uh, follow what he says. And I said, okay, I am going to a land whereby I know nobody in Michigan. And I said, I will stay in prayer and f pray for favor upon my life. And I've seen the, 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 the favor of God upon my life. There is a woman in, my, in our church. She just asked me to say, do you have a driver's license? I said no, and she said, okay, once you get a driver's license, let me know. And when I got the driver's license, she just said, okay, let's go car shopping. And I was like, I don't have money. Did you not hear a testimony like this before? And I said, I don't have money. She said, well, God has told me to buy you a car. So I am buying you a car. And this is not a person I know. We just met here. She's an American. I am a Malawian. There is nothing, you know, like we are not related in any way. And I would like to say one thing that I got from the apostle. He says that when you stay in prayer, God will give you the hearts of men. And I've seen God giving me the hearts of men in this land. Hallelujah. Celebrate Jesus! Someone shout, favor is real. What does our Father teach us? All blessings come from who? Through who? To who? Come on, celebrate Jesus one more time. Your name and what the Lord has done. Straight to the point. Good evening, Konyonia. My name is Victory. I'm so glad to be here. God is good. Um, just a little backstory. Over 10 years ago, my brother moved down here to the United States and he filed for my mom to come here and she fought for my siblings and I and my dad included. And glory to God, the applications was approved except for my older sister's application. And uh, for over 10 years now, we've been waiting for immigration to respond. We kept praying, fasting, there's nothing we didn't do. At some point, we actually gave up. We're like, okay, no problem. We'll just forget about it. And um, over time, we'll go online. We'll check it to see if they've given us at least something, but no response. And because my parents always tell me, okay, Victory, call them. And it got to a point I was getting tired to call because whenever I call, they keep giving me the same response. They either said, okay, the last one you spoke to gave you wrong information, and then we have to wait. So in 2021, I encountered Apostle in my dream. I've never heard of Apostle at all, at all. And I was sleeping, I was in my room, and he came in my dream and anointed my feet. And I called a friend of mine, I was like, this is what I saw, who is this man? Can you, let me Google search or something. He said, oh, don't you know of, of Apostle Selman? I said, I don't know. So that was when I started following him. I've been listening to his messages. And I even connected my families, my brothers, my sisters, my parents. They've been connected to Apostle Selman's teachings and all that. And earlier this year, when we heard that Sound of Revival is coming to America, we were excited. And I told my mom that, see, we're going to come here in life. And yesterday, we came by God's grace, and the lady that testified of a 21 years visa, so when she testified, we keyed into that testimony, and we were just screaming back there, we were like, God, we will not live here the same year we came. There's no way we'll come here, and we'll not encounter you. So when Apostle also came in, and he said that he sees people receiving letters of congratulations. said that we also keyed into that prophetic word and I, my mom was behind me I was like mommy pray tonight we will not live here at all and you know where, I'm, where I come from we always say God I beg so I was here I was like God I beg please 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 but anyway so oh God Jesus thank you Lord sitting right there and the next thing I heard my mom say 
the Lord has done it finally. Finally, finally. So I turned. I was like, Mommy, what happened? She gave me a phone and in this service, they sent an approval letter for a visa we were waiting for over 10 years. While in the service, the service was not over yet. I'm just here to return all glory to God. I just wanted to encourage all of us. God is here. God is here. And we will not live here the same way we came. Hallelujah. Can we celebrate Jesus? Celebrate Jesus. Is the God that confirms the words of his servants. Please believe every word of prophecy you hear tonight. Your word is coming to you tonight in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Right to the point, your name and what the Lord has done, sir. Blessings, grace and peace. My name is Ashton Lang. Uh, I was born in America, but raised in the Bahamas. Came back to America. And um, came from a very dysfunctional family. My, my father was a drug dealer and ended up on crack cocaine, so on and so forth. Um, I followed that same path. Unfortunately, I was to a point where I was eaten out of garbages. I was um, in mental institutions, walking around the streets of America in Miami barefoot. I, would, I wouldn't shower for near months. Um, you name it, been through it. I've been kidnapped three different times taken out into the woods, um, beaten, so on and so forth, but God. However, I was raised in a Christian home, even though it, there was still a seed, a righteous seed. And, and then the Bible says, and the Bible tells us that before you was in your mother's womb, I knew you, and I ordained you a prophet unto the nations. And so, we say, train up a child in the way she go, and in the end it will not depart. So, I knew to run back to him. So, in 2020, I came, I ran into prison. And I said, okay, God, I, I, I need you. Well, from 2020 to 2022, I, I, I was fighting, but I was zealous and passionate. However, Paul talks about being zealous, but without knowledge. And so even though there were people in my family, sincerely, they, they didn't have what was needed. So in 2022, after falling down and getting back up and falling down and getting back up, I came to the end of myself. I said, God, something has to change. I'm desiring you. I'm, you know what I mean? Sometimes we follow that pattern. I'm jumping. I'm sowing seeds. Bam, bam, bam. Nothing just working. I keep on falling down. But one day, my, my girlfriend at the time, she said, babe, I need you in 2022. She said, I want you to listen to someone. And I was like, who you need me to listen to now? Note and be note that this is in prison. This is, this is no, this, I'm not on TV or I'm watching TV. This is in prison. And she said, This is an African preacher. I said, Man, I don't want to hear no African preacher right now, man. And so she says, She says, No, babe, I'm telling you, from the minute I heard Apostle Joshua voice. I listen to the message. When I listen to the message, I say, babe, I found him. That's the real deal. From that minute on, for months, it's not cheap to use the phone in prison. But I listened to him over and over. And now watch this. I came out of prison last year, February, right? I end up because I don't have any education, so on and so forth. I had to work at waste management throwing garbage and so even though the money was okay and I was taking care of my home and everything eventually uh, working I became very laborious I would be working garbage juice would be splashing in my face uh, but at the same time I had the opportunity to put earbuds in my ears and so while I was while I was while I was listening to the while while I, this was going on and I was going through the struggle I would listen to three, four sermons per day by Apostle Joshua Selman. 
And I remember when he said, he talked about how he had a condition in his head. And he was, he was in the back of the class, but he would speak in tongues. He would talk about how he was driving the bicycle in the rain. And so I said, oh, now I understand. When I encounter trials and tribulation, I can, I can battle with the word. That when men say there's a casting, I mean, men say there's a casting down. You said that it's a lifting up. And I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. And so I would listen to the sermons. And when I connect with him I connected with Nathaniel Bassi and so I was just listening to music my wife I listened to the music so much she said baby you soon be an African I say it is what it is <laughs> so but this is the thing everybody is talking about the grace of favor but I want to talk about the grace for speed remember hallelujah Jesus hallelujah Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Remember, Apostle always tells us, he says, these, these are not cunning devised fables. To earlier, remember when he said, there are people that can be in ministry for 20 years and you can have someone who is submitted to transformation in one year and overtake the person in 20 years. Listen, 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 listen. I now have two businesses. I was, I was homeless and I own, now own my own home. Me and my wife and my mother-in-law, we are now in the process. Listen, in less than in less than 15 months, we are about to build a homeless shelter. And one last thing. One last thing. We are winning souls for Jesus. Hey, this is Koinonia. Jesus with one shout of praise. 